Okay, our next speaker, the first speaker, our second session, is Keenan Rhodes from FTSE. Is that how you pronounce it? Right. That's it, yeah. So, uh, so, so we've been working in the kind of sort of social data trading space for about 15 months. And I thought uh, for tonight, and because it's the end of the year, we'd actually sort of go back and look at more sort of how we got here rather than just our, our current product, <coughs> and particularly at a couple of the big mistakes uh, that we made. The, <clears throat> the, the first of those is sentiment. Now, this, uh, this, this Boland paper was, uh, it was quite sort of popular at the time. It's not, it's not a particularly good paper, it's not particularly technical, it's, uh, but for some reason it captured the mainstream press and it was put out there that, uh, that basically Twitter can, can move the markets. And that, at the time, it kind of sent, it sent us in a direction, it sent quite a number of other startups in, in the direction of sentiment and perhaps we can make something of this and it was all uh, very new at the time. But, but it also, to us anyway, it, it highlights the, the kind of problem in that if you, like this paper did, if you take essentially a curated uh, set of, of tweets and they took 10 million over, over 12 months and you essentially remove all the rubbish and then you, you look backwards, you can always find good data and two, two lines that, that look like they're actual, actually tradable. But, but when you try and do it all in real time and try and get some value out of it, that's extremely difficult. And at the end of the day, we do not believe in any way, shape or form that Twitter sentiment of a stock is tradable. So that was the first mistake we made. We, we spent about six months going down that path before we, uh, before we changed tack. The, the second uh, mistake, if you like, that we made was <coughs> essentially the, the marker, the, the problem that we were, that we're actually solving. Now, w we think you can use the data in two ways. That one, one is you you effectively explain market movement, something happens to price, you're looking at social data, you know, why did my, why did my stock price actually move? And that's, that's a pretty easy sell to people. I mean, they, they've already got a position, they, uh, they, they want to know, it's, it's, uh, they're all pretty, pretty well accept that uh, stuff happens on Twitter before it happens even on Bloomberg and Reuters and that there is, there is value there and that they are willing to pay that. So, so rather than choose the easy option and go and sell lots of stuff to people, we thought we'd, we'd actually go for the extremely difficult sell and the difficult problem, uh, which is uh, how to trade off it. <clears throat> and we thought that if we could do that, then, then we'd have a great sort of technical product and lots of IP. But what sort of turned into, or what went from being sort of an MVP, trying to build very, in a very lean kind of way, turned out for, for another sort of good 6, 12 months on trying to make it... Uh, like to prove beyond doubt that it actually, it actually worked. And that's a, it was a very difficult sell to, to investors who essentially always wanted us to have a full trading record uh, and even to clients as well, they, they wanted to see the same, same type of thing. Uh, and that it was a very black and white sort of thing. Can you generate, have you generated profits for yourself? If yes, then we'll buy it. But otherwise, uh, they're extremely sceptical. So we, um, yeah, we spent a, a long time uh, doing the difficult stuff and not selling much, and uh, sort of a little bit too long. But um, having sort of got over those hurdles, we, we now have two products, one in the defensive side and one on the offensive side. What, what we do slightly differently is we, we, don't, we don't do sentiment stock. We, we, uh, we essentially take several thousand different terms, so we track for instance, uh, say for Glaxo, we track every drug, every board member, every anything that we can think of that might actually move uh, the price of Glaxo. And so we, we, we track an awful lot of things. And for each one of those kind of feeds, or those kind of search terms, we, we have a feed of data. And then on that, we go through the context, again, the relevance. Um, sentiment is useful in certain places. Uh, uh, and particularly trend. Trend is, for us, is the, the single most important uh, element of the whole lot. Out, out of all that, we generate uh, an indicator we call SSI. So anyone who's traded will be familiar with, with RSI, and SSI is, is, is our version of that, social strength indicator. So SSI itself is just social data. SSI plus includes trading volume and, and price as well. And essentially that way you get the two directions. So we're looking for unusual activity in social data, and then you're looking for changes in price. The other side is you, you're, you have changes in, big changes in price and you're looking to, uh, to explain it that way. 
when there are unusual activities, uh, something happening, essentially we're highlighting you know, that one moment the, the, an oil rig is mentioned, then we're emailing you because, because of the volume, because the sentiment went out of normal bounds, and we're basically highlighting to you that, that something has happened, and we do that in a variety of ways. So we have, uh, we have two products now that we sell. Uh, now, unfortunately, at this resolution, it doesn't look that great, but uh, blown up, it look, looks a little bit better. So this is it's deliberately like a trading application. And the, this is the big figure is, is our SSI figure. Um, when, when we have our, our hundreds of terms per stock, this figure is the most highly correlated feed with the stock price at any point in time. And what that allows us to do is, is you can see that today Apple's trading off the iPad mini, but yesterday it was trading, uh, or most likely to be trading off a Fed decision or, or something like that. You can see, you can see the shift in, in what the stock is actually trading off. The, uh, <coughs> the, the, the messages then are, again, related to the feed that is most highly correlated. So you get a feed of messages um, if it was the Fed or if it was the iPad, the, the types of messages in here uh, do change. And we also put a lot of uh, like technical analysis, so when, again, sentiment, volume, trend, all these sorts of things go out of bounds, we, we uh, publish into that. And that, that, <coughs> that gives someone, pretty much if you read that, then, you, uh, then you're able to get uh, a good idea of what's happening to your stock. So there's all sorts of charting bits and pieces uh, like this that it's a bit hard to show on a, on a screen like that, but um, they, uh, it's uh, all sorts. Now, so that's our, that's our more sort of <coughs> offensive kind of product. Uh, it's, uh, it's got some take up, but not, not a huge amount. What we're finding more is this, and, and we literally just put this up this evening, so it's a, it's a bit rough and ready. But this is where we see the market at the moment. The market's too sceptical for trading off it, but the market is here. And what, what this is, is it's, a, it's a very tweak deck like application. We work in conjunction with DataSift, and what, uh, what we've got is essentially a feed of about, about 35,000 people around the world who sort of, have, uh, who, who sort of tweet about uh, stocks and are a higher quality feed, if you like, overall. And so the, that data then comes into here. And why it becomes useful is because if you, you can sort of follow a sector or a stock and, uh, and, and so forth. So it's a, this was, it's a design sort of a tablet, so even a trader would have it on their desktop, dirt cheap, uh, sort of 20 pounds a month or something. And then they've got all the key messages uh, that, that are basically about a, a stock at any point in time. So that's, uh, that's the two products that we have. So so just to kind of highlight, really, it, it's sentiment extremely poor. It, it, uh, there is just nothing tradable we can find uh, at all. Volume is a better indicator, but again, uh, not uh, on, its own, all, on its own, all these things are not so good. We, we use SSI because we believe it has overall better correlation uh, with price. Basically, we're measuring, when something comes out about a stock, we just want to measure very quickly how fast all the news discussion is, is exploding or, or not exploding, and then that gives us a guide of uh, what price will do. So our SSI is, is a bit like RSI, it's a contrarian measure. So when it goes to extreme levels, either positive or negative, then you, you do the opposite. So if it's extremely positive, you're selling. If it's extremely negative, you start buying. Now most of the time it hovers around zero, it's, uh, it's very noisy. Uh, it's only very, very occasionally that you get down to these sort of highly negative uh, levels. But essentially, if it got to minus 50, then by the end of the next closing day's uh, trading, then there's a 73% chance that price would have gone back up again. So this is over uh, 18 months of US equities data. Um, we're also running, we've got about a four month uh, data set for FTSE 100 and a small trial on, uh, on FX as well. The other, the other place where we find that it is really good is opening predictions. So we've published, we've published sort of open market, uh, opening price predictions now almost every day for about eight months, and uh, and this is what we find. So you've got sort of 16 hours worth of overnight data to predict one figure, and we give ourselves uh, about half an hour in the uh, in the mornings to uh, to see if that uh, basically our target price is met, 
And so that's, that's, been, that's been quite good. It's, it's a bit difficult for a trade because it doesn't, it's not taking into account gapping up and down. So it's not a trade, it's just a prediction, but, but that's definitely where we see value. We have a lot of social data for, for one figure. In the intraday trading, it, you may as well flip a coin. There's, there's almost no value uh, and, unless it's uh, centered around a, a news event. And that's it, that's where we're at. Any questions? There is a lot of discussion of sentiment, which is really difficult to do computationally in any sort of a robust fashion outside of very narrowly defined context. But what about automated event alerts, meaning that you create uh, industry sector specific keyword profiles that alert you when a common event takes place such as an earthquake or for that matter a drug being recalled or things along those lines. That, that's exactly it, yeah. So that's why we track all those hundreds of terms to pick up exactly that. And we'll alert you when they're outside of normal bounds. So yes. So that's the, the mindset of what's well being the, done. The, the actual sentiment, going back to the first part, like the actual sentiment stuff, I mean, we, we find, we think you can get about certainly 85% accuracy on sentiment. And we think sentiment is relatively commoditized. I mean, everyone offers sentiment these days. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's, you, you can, you get a little bit extra if you start going into a niche and you can improve it slowly, but still, even straight Bayesian kind of open source models, you should be expecting sort of more than 80% accuracy on, on sentiment. I mean, it, it's, uh, it really is commoditized. The difficult bit is making money out of it. Like, how do you trade off it? You can get everything else, everything, it's all, unless you can make money out of it, it's all just a bit of extra fluff. It's just more too much data. Um, so you track uh, thousands of terms to calculate SSIs, yeah. but um, so who defines that database? Who, who defines what terms you track? Is it automated process or is it? Uh, at at the moment it's not automated, no, at the moment it's, it's manual. Um, we've done that, uh, we've got a couple of clients and, and they, we've got some initial data set and they've kind of added a couple of percent to that, but uh, it, uh, it centers around products, board members and, uh, and the usual company stuff. So how, how do you assess uh, to what extent that, that calculation is subjective then? Uh, okay. it, it's, I mean, it is subjective. There's, uh, you know, we, we've manually put the list together, but it's reasonably comprehensive. I mean, it's not that, the next step would be to do kind of machine learning around that to generate sort of new terms, but uh, law of diminishing returns perhaps at the moment. Mm, thank you. Yeah, just something very simple. You said you can uh, predict in 69% of the cases tomorrow's price. Yeah. I was wondering how you do that. So I suppose you set up kind of a window, price window, within, within which the realized price would fall and then you, you consider your prediction successful. Is that window, how does that compare to the bid offer spread on the market or? No, we, we don't take that into account. That's, uh... No, I'm, I'm just, so the only way to say I can predict the price and it's a yes or a no is what it's, in my imagination, is you would set up a window, a parameter window, within which the price would fit or not, would be outside. The, how big is that range? I mean, if I put my range plus or minus 20%, you would always predict greatly tomorrow's price. We, we, we predict an, a single price. You predict at one value. One value. Down to the decimal. Yes. In 69% of the cases. Yes. We should be trading on that, I right? Yeah, opening price is not, uh, there's potential for it, but, but because you've got gap up and down, it's not, uh, it's not, like in tradable terms, it's not as easy. It is just predicting the price. I see. Interesting. Thanks. Hi. Um, would you say that SSI is more highly correlated with your feeds in B2C companies rather than B2B companies? Uh, we don't really see it like that. We, uh, we would look at, so we have an SSI for every single feed security combination of which there are like th tens of thousands of them. So we we kind of rank it on accuracy between price. We, we don't break it up like that. All right, thank you. Keen, thank you very much. Cheers. Let's move on.